Good day again, mga kapilo. This day, we will have another philosophical coffee session and we will discuss about reason and impartiality as minimum requirements for morality. Now, this is actually chapter 2, topic 2 of our module in ethics. So let us start. So for the learning outcomes, uh, upon completion of this topic, the student must be able to, number one, to explain reason and impartiality as minimum requirements for morality, and number two, to evaluate a moral dilemma using the seven-step moral reasoning model, which will be discussed later on, and on which I will also give a situation, and, and we will be analyzing what proper decision shall we do uh, in that particular situation. So the Greek philosopher Aristotle regarded that human beings have a rational soul that makes us different with that of animals and plants. Uh, plus, you should always remember that according to Aristotle, there are three types of soul. Number one is vegetative soul, which uh, the, pla the plants uh, do have, the trees, the plants, and uh, yung uh, mga, mga flora. Now, uh, another thing is uh, the sensitive soul. The second one is the sensitive soul. The sensitive soul allows animals to uh, to sense or to feel a sensitive soul. Yan. And the last soul is the rational soul. Tayo bilang uh, mga tao, we have these three types of soul. The vegetative soul, the sensitive soul, and the rational soul. Why do we have vegetative soul? Because uh, we, we can grow. We grow. Diba? Lumalaki tayo. The sensitive soul allows us to feel or to perceive. And finally, the rational soul allows us to think and to reason out. That is why you should always remember these three types of soul according to Aristotle. The vegetative soul, the sensitive soul, and the rational soul. Now, rationality is the capability for logical thought with the ability to reason towards sound conclusions based on facts and evidence, draw inferences from situations and circumstances, and make sound well-reasoned judgments based on factual information. Plants and animals are incapable of complex reasoning and introspection, much more so in distinguishing good from bad and right from wrong. And from the discussion earlier, sinabi ko sa inyo, because plants and animals do not have uh, this what we call rational soul. Only human beings have this rational soul. So the absence of the rational soul in the plants and animals uh, uh, disables them to distinguish good from bad actions or from right and from wrong actions. So, ibig sabihin, itong plants and animals, wala silang rationality, just like us. Okay? And we can easily say that and we can easily observe that. Sino ba namang aso, for example, ang pag pinagalitan mo, sasagot sa'yo, di ba? Or mga ngatwitan sa'yo, or ang halaman. Kahit nakausapin mo yan na maghapon, magdamag, hindi sasagot yan at hindi magre-reklamo yan. So, if that be the case, baka sa'yo may problema. Okay? So, a person is called rational or reasonable when his beliefs and actions conform to the dictates of those principles of morality or when he is subjectively guided by them so should always we should always remember that our actions should be guided by our reasons because if our actions will not be guided by our reasons then magkakaroon ng palpak magkakaroon ng malaking problema and let us discuss further so that we can know kung bakit pa now, reason is also identified with the capacity that enables us to identify reasons, the particular considerations that count in favor of belief or action. Now, since human beings are rational, we as human beings are rational, we have the free will now to strive for perfection. We want to be perfect as much as possible. Diba? 
wala naman sigurong tao na gustong hari ng sablay siya or reyna siya ng sablay. As much as possible, we want to be perfect. We want to be perfect in many things. Why do we, for example, why do we study? Because we want to be perfect. Why do we, why do we uh, do things? Why do we practice, for example, in order for us to be perfect? But always remember this case, uh, nobody can be perfect. Practice will not make you perfect, but practice will only make you better. Practice ka ng practice, it will not make you perfect, but it will make you a better person. Now, by achieving this fulfillment and well-rounded development, they would somehow attain happiness. Each and every one of us as human beings, we want to be happy and we want to be genuinely happy, not just happy. Okay? What will make us happy in the first place? Will it be cell phone? Will it be a new house? Will it be a new car? Will it be uh, a new relationship? Will it be uh, health in our family, for example? What will make us happy? So, the goal of one of the goals of ethics is for us to be happy. And in order for us to be happy, it suggests or ethics suggests that we, we live an ethical life. An individual should decide on actions that properly express his rationality. Yung ating pag-iisip because hindi pwedeng ang emotions natin ang mag-guide sa atin but only our rationality. Now, moral judgment or moral judgments must be backed by the best arguments or reasons out there. Not only good reasons or better judgments. Our decisions must be guided as much as possible by our reason. should always remember that uh, we as human beings have the capacity to rationalize. Last time I discussed to you uh, that we as persons or we as human beings have emotions. And sometimes our emotions affect our actions. When we are angry, it affects our actions. When we are sad, it affects our actions. When we are so happy, it also affects our actions. The last time I discussed to you, uh, nasabi ko sa inyo that never ever make a decision when you are in the height of your emotion. Kasi the quality of the decision that you will be arriving at, the quality of action that you will be doing will be so much affected, especially when you allow your emotions to overcome your reason. Now, morality requires impartiality with regard to those moral agents affected by a violation of a moral rule. Morality requires the impartial consideration of each individual's interests. Now, in the first place, what is impartiality? Okay? So let us, let us discuss. Impartiality or what we call fair-mindedness is a principle of justice holding that decisions should be based on objective criteria rather than on the basis of bias, self-interest, prejudice, or preferring the benefit to one person over another for improper reasons. Now, in layman's term, lagi natin actually naririnig yung, impartial, yung impartiality na yan. Dapat maging impartial tayo. Okay, ito. Lagi nyo naririnig since wala namang abs pen pag nanonood kayo ng balita. Ang lagi sinasabi, oh, di ba? Walang kinikilingan, walang perinoprotektahan, servisyong totoo lamang. That is what we call impartial. Wala kang kikilingan, wala kang papanigan, wala kang protektahan. That is that is you being impartial. And when when coming up to decisions, dapat maging impartial ka. Why? Because hindi pwedeng may papanigan ka na, is, na isang set of standards. For example, na ito, kasi ito yung lagi kong pinapractice. Ay, ito, hindi ko susundin kasi uh, ugali nyo yan, eh, kultura nyo yan, hindi ko yan susundin. No. In order for you to arrive to um, the right moral judgment, dapat maging impartial ka. You have to weigh things. Okay, so later on, I will discuss to you the seven stepwise model na kung saan bago tayo mag-arrive to a decision, mayroon tayong mga susundan na sunod-sunod na steps siya. Okay, 
So we need to be impartial. We need to uh, uphold the principle of justice. Dapat wala tayong uh, bias, wala tayong papaningan, wala tayong proprotektahan. So we will not be preferring the benefit of one person over another or at the expense of another person. Now, according to Rachel's, the minimum conception of morality is, is this. Okay. Morality is the effort to guide one's conduct by reason. That is, to do what there are the best reasons for doing, while giving equal weight to the interest of each individual affected by one's decisions. Okay? So, our conduct must be guided by our reasons. Not just reasons, but the best reasons that we can have, that we can arrive to. And we should also give weight to the interest of the other, other people. But in coming up to decisions, <coughs> excuse me, in coming up to decisions, we should also consider the others. We should also consider what will they feel, what uh, what consequences will it have to them, uh, magsasuffer ba sila, for example. So there are things that we need to consider before coming up to a certain decision. Now, there is this seven stepwise model of scat ray uh, we, this is also in your module actually so let us uh we will be studying them one by one so the first step is to gather the facts number two is to determine the ethical issues number three is to determine the principles which have bearing in the situation number four we have to list the alternatives number five we have to compare the alternatives with the principles. Number six, weigh the consequences. And finally, number seven, we make a decision. So sabi ko sa inyo kanina, before we come up to the decision, we have to follow this. So not necessarily, nasabihin niyo sa akin, ito ba lagi ang susundan natin itong seven step voice model? No, this is just a recommendation. But, uh, um, for the sake of studying them in our subject, i-discuss talaga natin sila. Kasi, kasi maganda tong model na to. Itong, uh, itong model na seven stepwise model na sinadjust ni Scott Ray. Now, I will give you now a uh, situation. Okay, this is the situation. Anjo confessed to Father Santino that he raped seven minor girls 10 years ago when he was still working as a seaman Abroad, so meaning rapist si Anjo, formerly rapist. And that he was able to escape criminal liability there because everybody thought that he is already dead when their ship wrecked in the ocean of Antarctica. So nakatakas siya sa panggagahasa niya. Na, nakatakas siya sa pangpipidopilya niya because uh, everybody thought, everybody thought na napatay na siya because their ship, uh, as a seaman, they, their ship wrecked in the oceans of Antarctica. Sino ba namang mabubuhay sa Antarctica? Kalamig-lamig doon. Now, meanwhile, nandito na siya ngayon sa Isabela o nandito na siya ngayon sa Pilipinas. He is presently the gardener of the Villa Ursula family here in Isabela. The Villa Ursula is a family which is very close to the priest. Si Father Santino. Now, Anjo also mentioned that though he is already a renewed man, nagbago na siya, pero there are times that he feels sexually tempted to the youngest daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Villa Ursula. O na, may takot ngayon. Baka mamaya bumalik siya sa dati niyang gawain. Kasi in the first place, hindi niya nga pinagbayaran yung ginawa niyang kasalanan before. Now, he also asked the priest not to tell, not to tell anything to the Villa Ursula family and promised to the priest that he will always keep in touch with him, especially at times that he feels tempted. So sabi niya na lang, Father, huwag niyo po, huwag niyo po ako isusumbong. And nangangako po ako na kapag nararamdaman ko itong temptation na ito dun sa youngest daughter uh, ni Mr. and Mrs. Villa Ursula, nasabihan ko po kayo para ma-guide po ninyo ako. So that is the situation. Now, the question would be, if you are Father Santino, what would you do? Anong gagawin mo? Okay? 
if other Santino ha, okay? Okay. Uh, let's have a break for uh, a few seconds. Oh. Remember that the sacramental seal of confession is inviolable. Meaning to say, hindi mo pwedeng i-break yung sacramental seal of confession as a priest. Ano ba tong sacramental seal of confession? Lahat ng i-confess sa iyo ng penitent ay hindi mo pwedeng sabihin sa iba. Sa inyo lang 'yon. Meron kayong tinatawag na secret niyo lang 'yon. Because it uh you have this sacramental seal of confession. It is as if a privileged communication na sa inyo lang. Hindi mo pwedeng sabihin sa iba. What would be the consequence if you will tell uh, what the penitent told you okay or confess to you quoting canon 983.1 of the code of canon law the catechism states it is a crime for a confessor in any way to betray a penitent by word or in any other manner or for any reason and if you will break the seal of confession it will it may be a reason for you to be excommunicated ibig sabihin uh, ititiwalag ka na ng simbahan kapag ganyan ang ginawa because it's a crime for us we have this laws na simbahan meron din silang tinatawag na code of canon law na kung saan ito yung sinusundan nilang batas and if you are a priest and somebody confess to you and then isinawalat mo o itinis mismo yung kinonfess sa'yo It may be a reason for you to be excommunicated because you have broken the sacramental seal of confession and following the code of canon law natarapat lamang na maparusahan ka. Now, applying the seven step wise model of scattery. So, tingnan natin kanina sabi natin number one, gather the facts. This is the first. So, now let us Uh, determine the facts. Let's gather the facts. The facts are as follows. Si Anjo, nang rape siya ng seven minor girls. Okay? Nang, nanggahasa siya. Pito. Ngayon, he escaped criminal liability. Nakatakas siya. Eh, akala lang lahat, patay na siya. At ngayon, nagwa-work siya as gardener or nagtatrabaho siya as gardener sa Ursula family. The Ursula family is very close to Father Santino. Now, another thing is that uh, Anjo feels sexually tempted to the youngest daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Villa Ursula. So, ito yung facts na nakuha natin out of the situation. Number two, we should determine now the ethical issues. What are the ethical issues in the situation? So, ito magkakaroon ng orang uh, versus uh, this one versus this one. Because Father Santino now is in a dilemma. Ano gagawin ko? Ano gagawin ko? That's a dilemma ako. Uh, kapag sinabi ko or eto eto dito, dito si Father Santino oh, and dito si Father Santino. Pag sinabi ko, pag brinate ko naman, pag brinate ko yung as, as seal of confession, may excommunicate ako. Nagkasala ako. Pag hindi ko naman sasabihin yun, baka mapanganib yung buhay ng mga Villa Ursula dahil sa katahimikan na ginawa ko. So what will I do? I am now in a dilemma. If I am, if I were Father Santino. So, there are two ethical issues here. Number one, will Father Santino tell the Villa Ursula family about the confession made by Anjo? Sasabihin ba niya? Or, will Father Santino keep the seal of confession pre or privileged communication at the expense of endangering the Villa Ursula family? Uh, That's the Villa Ursula family, that Ting family. Ah. Okay. Now, number three. We have to determine the principles which have bearing in the situation. So, ano nga ba yung natin mga principles dito? Number one, the inviolability of the seal of confession. Siyempre, dapat, hindi mo i-violate yun. Kasi nga, gaya ang sabi ko sa inyo, there, there is a consequence according to the Code of Canon Law. Another thing, the inviolability of the privileged communication. It is found actually in the Rules of Evidence, Section 24 CC, Rule 130 C1 of the Rules of Court. Kung ano man yan, uh, medyo mas malalim na yan. Kasi in, in the first place, for example, uh, because of the privileged communication, hindi pwedeng, mag, uh, hindi pwedeng mag-testify 
yung pari against the penitent without the penitent's approval or permission. So, under the rules of, of evidence. Yeah. So, medyo technical masyan. Now, the next thing is that we need to list the alternatives. Ano yung mga alternatives na ito? Ito, since Father Santino could not break the seal of confession, he may suggest to Anjo to bring the matter to Mr. and Mrs. Villa Ursula. O sabi niya dapat kay Mr. and Mrs. Villa Ursula, yung about doon. Anyway, sabi niya naman, he's already a renewed man as he claims. Diba? Sabi niya, nagbago naman na siya. Or another alternative is for Father Santino to suggest to Anjo to halt as the, as the Villa Ursula family gardener and to find another job. Magkadap ka nalang na ibang trabaho, in-danger mo lang yung, yung Villa Ursula family. E ganyan. Or another alternative for Father Santino, Santino is to suggest to Anjo to face his criminal liability abroad and to clean his conscience. Pumunta ka sa abroad, uh, bumalik ka doon, harapin mo yung kaso mo. Pwede niya din sabihin yun. So these, other, these are the alternatives that Father Santino may suggest to Anjo. Now, we need now to discuss uh, and com uh, to compare the alternatives with the principles. In many cases, the principles resolve the case. Father Santino now may advise Mr. and Mrs. Villa Ursula to put a CCTV around their home to secure the family. Yeah, Siyempre, dapat may CCTV. But just in case may mangyari, alam nila kung sa Anjo nga ba yung gumawa noon. Kasi uh, hindi naman sa being a judgmental, but Anjo uh, already uh, ha, uh, have confessed or has confessed na nakagawa na siya ng krimen dati. Pero hindi naman sasabihin ito ni Father Santino directly. But kung saan, sasabihin niya lang, uh, eh, mabdelikado ang, ang panahon ngayon. Why not put a CCTV around your house para just in case maging secured lang tayo may mga papasok na magdanakaw or may mga papasok na masasamang loob. Just like, for example, dito din masasabi. So another suggestion is that. Or Father Santino may also suggest to Mr. and Mrs. Villa Ursula to always check their youngest daughter kasi baka maging prey, prey siya sa predator, sa predatory uh, uh, tendency ni Anjo. Kasi si Anjo nagawa niya na yun before. Okay? Now, now, we have to also weigh the consequences. So ano nga ba yung magiging consequences niya? The consequences are dependent on the alternatives which are listed. So ano ba yung mga alternatives natin nilagay kanina? Ayan. So Father Santino may suggest to Anjo to bring the matter to Mr. and Mrs. Villa Ursula. Anyway, he's already a renewed man as he claims. So ano nga ba yung pwede maging consequences niyan? Ano ngayon ang, ang maaaring sabihin naman ni Anjo? Baka magalit si Anjo? Baka hindi niya tanggapin yung suggestion ni Father uh, Santino? Or, Father Santino may suggest uh, to Anjo to halt as the Villa, Villa Ursula family gardener and to find for another job. Baka magalit na naman niya si Anjo pag ganyan ang maging ang sasabihin niya. Kasi, Father, uh, akala ko ba tutulungan mo ako eh? Pag ganyan ang gagawin ko, mawawala na ako ng trabaho. Paano naman ako? Parang ganun. So, pwedeng mangyari yan kay Santino. Pwedeng. Ay, ganyan ang sabihin pala ni uh, Anjo kay Father Santino. So, we have to weigh the consequences. And the last alternative na prinesan natin kanina is uh, Father Santino to suggest to Anjo to face his criminal liability abroad and to clean his conscience. So, tatanggapin kaya ni Anjo yan, for example, yung ganyang, uh, yung ganyang uh, magiging suggestion ni Father Santino. So, now, class, the, the last one is to make a decision. Or, what would be Father Santino's decision? Ano ba ang gagawin niya in order for him to arrive to a moral judgment na i-translate niya into a moral action without being impartial, without being impartial on the part of the Villa Ursula na very close sa kanya and without being impartial din naman kay Anjo na penitent. So, nandito ngayon siya sa dilemma. And the better question would be, if you were Father Santino, what would you do? 
So we have a thing that we have to reflect on for uh, after this uh, lecture or after this discussion. So plus the activity that uh, the activity that you will do uh, later on after this lecture, uh, I'm making certain. I said, "Put lang sa sa GC natin, and it will be in Google Forms just like before." So, and yung seven stepwise model ni Scott Ray, and I hope uh, that you were able to pick or and to adapt something uh, useful uh, in your life, especially when it comes to uh, arriving to a moral decision. Uh, applying the seven stepwise model of Scott Ray. So, muli sa susunod na uh, discussion natin, uh, magkita kita ulit tayo. God bless, guys, and I hope that you will always do good. Bye bye.